In this talk, I'd like to explain a little about the next generation of our hardware real-time OS. This chart shows a comparison of our current generation hardware real-time OS with the next generation version. The current hardware real-time OS is already included in several Renesas products. You can find it installed in some of our RZT1 line, as well as all products in the RIN32 and RZN1 series. As you can see, API performance in our next-gen hardware, real-time OS, is improved over current generation values. In addition to that performance boost, it will offer improved API execution time and shorter interrupt latency as well. What's more, it allows for tightly coupled configurations and offers multi-core support. Let's talk about those features in a little more detail. This chart shows the current generation hardware real-time OS and CPU connection configuration, like you might find in our RIN32. The CPU and hardware real-time OS are connected via the system bus, as you can see here. This type of connection between the CPU and the hardware real-time OS is what's known as loosely coupled hardware RTOS. This, on the other hand, is what we call a tightly coupled hardware RTOS. It's characterized by a dedicated interface connecting the CPU to the hardware real-time OS. This connection allows the enormous benefit of reducing overhead to the utmost minimum. To put it another way, the interrupt disabled period is almost completely eliminated, allowing you to implement a truly real-time system. The next-gen hardware real-time OS will support both tightly coupled and loosely coupled systems. This slide shows the next-gen hardware real-time OS performance. As you can see, tightly coupled hardware real-time OS is overwhelmingly fast. This is because of the previously mentioned minimal overhead and nearly non-existent interrupt disabled periods. Compared to the current generation hardware real-time OS, even the loosely coupled version of NextGen offers greatly improved performance. Let's move on to multi-core support in real-time OS. This figure shows an AMP type multi-core system. In terms of real-time performance, SMP uses functions like cache memory, so it has trouble offering high real-time performance. Thus, real-time systems typically use AMP. For that reason, we'll focus on AMP systems here. A particular feature of AMP systems, as you can see, is that application software is hard assigned to each CPU. Also, as shown here, it doesn't matter if the real-time OS is a different type. Each CPU runs its processes independently, but as identified in the diagram by task 0 and task 1, the software on each CPU must be able to communicate with each other in some way. At such times, the software is able to exchange information in some way as long as shared memory and inter-CPU interrupts are present, as shown here. But this method is not easy to use and will not satisfy most application software engineers. The figure on the right shows a more user-friendly system that software engineers will appreciate. This is an AMP system, so the various application software are hard assigned to a CPU. However, here you can see the special feature of the real-time OS straddling the CPUs. Conventionally, tasks 2 and 3 running on CPU 1 can use event flags, semaphore, and mailbox to perform intertask communication and intertask synchronization. By extending that way of thinking, then, task 0 and task 3 running on separate CPUs can also perform intertask communication and synchronization. By doing this, applications can use APIs to perform intertask communication and synchronization no matter if they're running on the same PU or not, which makes this system extremely easy to use, especially in terms of software. 
Let's look at another benefit of this system. For example, in the diagram, the load on CPU 0 is higher than expected, and there's almost none on CPU 1. Now, for example, if we think of transferring task 1 from P CPU 0 to CPU 1, since task 1 is coded using real-time OS APIs, it's possible to transfer the task without needing to change the software all that much. To put it simply, it's much easier to achieve load balance. I think you'll agree that this means RTOS multi-core support is going to be a vital function for future embedded systems. However, conventional software RTOS has huge overhead and long interrupt disabled periods, leading to very poor real-time performance. By using hardware and real-time OS, the overhead can be reduced and interrupt disabled periods greatly shortened, easily allowing guaranteed high real-time performance while keeping the ease of use of a software real-time OS. Another problem with conventional real-time OS is that worst-case execution times are impossible to predict, particularly in systems using three or more CPUs. However, with hardware real-time OS, those worst-case execution times can be guaranteed. I think you'll agree that all of this means hardware real-time OS offers the ultimate real-time performance for multi-core systems. Let's finish up with a simple recap of our next-gen hardware real-time OS. First, Next generation hardware real-time OS will offer even greater enhanced system call functions. Next, by improving basic performance, it will further reduce RTOS overhead and shorten interrupt latency. Further, with tightly coupled support, tightly coupled hardware real-time OS can reduce overhead and interrupt disabled periods to their utmost limits, allowing the ultimate real-time system construction. And then there's the multi-core support. Multi-core has become a vital technology in embedded systems, and you can more easily implement an advanced real-time system using hardware real-time OS in a multi-core system. That finishes up this talk about hardware real-time OS. For more details, please see the Renesis website. And thank you for listening.